So now we're ready to degree our cam. Stay tuned and we'll show you how. So welcome back to In the Garage. Today we're actually going to show you how to degree your cam, verify everything with the cam before we start putting the heads on and working on the valve train. Now a lot of people, this is a mistake they'll make. They'll get a cam that they've ordered to the specs they want. They'll throw it in, put the timing set on, and assume that everything, as long as they zero the timing set, that everything's accurate. You still want to verify your cam degreeing and make those minor adjustments to make sure that the cam is set up to perform the way it's expected to. Because if it's not, if you, need, if you haven't adjusted it and degreed the cam in precisely to your block and your setup, you're going to run into issues down the road that's going to be hard to track back and it's going to take a lot of work to get all of this back off, take the heads back off and then check the camming uh, then. So there are a few tools that we're going to show you here in a minute um, that you're going to need to make sure that you can degree this cam. So coming a little closer, we'll show you what our setup is and then we'll show you how to actually do the degreeing. Okay, so before we can degree our cam, there are a couple of specialty tools that we've set up on the block to do this process. Uh, first, we've got our Proform crankshaft adapter to turn the crank with, and we've also got the uh, adapter that gives us the ability to put the Proform degreeing wheel on there. Obviously, it's not uh, locked down yet because we haven't set our top dead center. To do that, we have put our stop plate on the number one piston so that we can set up our top dead center. We're going to show you that process in a second. We also have our Proform heads off uh, dial indicator adapter that actually comes down and is going to help us show our valve uh, open and shut position so we can make sure that those are correct as well. To do that obviously we did put in the number one cylinder uh, valve lifter set. Um, and we lubed it up with the royal purple uh, assembly lube before we put in the lifters so that we could set up our dial indicator and, and check the, that lift and uh, where it's at its most closed and at, at its lift. So we, but we're going to show you that process. We, we've put on our wire indicator for the degree wheel. Uh, again, the first pr part of the process is we'll make sure we get to top dead center. We'll lock it in at that point on the degree wheel. Uh, we'll lock the degree wheel down on zero and then we'll move the piston up and down. Now one of the things that when you're checking your top dead center that we're going to talk about in a minute is that uh, we're trying to find the most true top dead center in the stroke. And we're going to show you why that's important and how you do that because there is some play that we'll talk about as we get to that process. But uh, let's go ahead and get our tools out. We'll find our top dead center and then we'll be able to degree this cam and lock everything down on the timing set. Stay tuned. Okay, so like I said, the first thing we want to do is find our true top dead center. So what we've done is we've put our stop plate on the number one piston. Everything's loose in here now. Um, so we come over to our timing set and we're going to try and get it to, to when we set up the timing set back to that uh, general top dead center, which that should be pretty close. We just watch the piston and see. Looks like we're on it where we set the top dead center. So we're going to lock all of the pin down to hold the piston in place. And we'll tighten up the lock nut. All right. So now what we've actually found is the general top dead center, but to do the degreeing and to get everything as accurate, to make sure that the cam is where it needs to be, we're going to need to find the, the true top dead center. 